are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Well, if Steve Donahue can do an August wrap up, I can do a TBR for September. I swore off doing TBRs uh, months ago, almost, I guess, seven or eight months ago, because I don't stick to them. I have fun putting them together, but they all kind of fall apart. But I'm going to do one today just for fun after I saw Steve's August wrap up, which, you know, Steve doing a monthly wrap up makes about as much sense as me doing a TBR. Uh, I thought, yeah, I kind of want to do one. You know, usually I folded my TBR into my Friday reads, so I just say in the, in the coming week I'm going to start blah blah blah, and I'll continue to do that. But just, I've been doing the 10 days of vlogging, exclusively vlogging for the Women in Translation readathon, and I kind of want to get back into doing other kinds of videos, so here I am. And also, this is a reality check, because when I look at the stack of books I got here, um, <laughs> so let's start with the ones that will probably still be in progress. September 1st is tomorrow, so yes, these will still definitely be in progress. Leftover from the Women in Translation Readathon, Alberta and Jacob by Cora Sandel, 1926 Norwegian novel, translated by Elizabeth Rokan. I'm loving it, I'm about halfway through it. A little bit more, maybe, a little bit more than halfway through it. And it's uh, really quite an emotionally resonant, powerful novel about a fucked up family in 1920s countryside Norway, rural Norway. Or seaside Norway and I'm really enjoying it. I'm expecting it to end up being a five-star read that's what I'll be beginning the month with very similarly left over from the readathon is the one who did not ask by Alta Fatima I can't remember when it was published uh, I couldn't really find out uh, I believe 1960s in Urdu but translated in 1993 by Ruxana Ahmed Really enjoying it. It's a slow read, very emotionally heartwarming. A book that I am choosing to savor slowly. So I will be continuing to read this in September. I hope to finish it up in September. Also, kind of a leftover from the Women in Translation Readathon, and it's a long story which I won't get into here. If you want the long story, you can make your way through one of my vlogs from that 10 day period. But I started reading. A biography of Kate Roberts who is what until a few days ago was a new to me writer and the queen of Welsh literature she wrote exclusively I think or at least predominantly in the Welsh language most of her works are short stories and they have been compared to de Maupassant if I'm pronouncing that right and as really first-class short stories so I've never read anything by her I'd never heard of her and if I had heard of her early enough, I could have ordered some of her books for the Women in Translation Readathon, but I will read them on my own time, or next year's Readathon. But in the meantime, I started reading a biography of her in English, which is on Scribd. And I can't remember the author's name, but here's the gif. Check the show notes. I'm enjoying reading the biography. I'm going to continue to read it during the month of September. Wouldn't be surprised if I don't finish it in September, because I don't really have a deadline for that one, but I'm enjoying it. Oh, I forgot to say that this is also left over from the Women in Translation readathon. So the last one that's left over from the readathon is Fear and Trembling by Amelie Nothomb. It's 100 pages. I should be able to knock it off early next week. It's uh, translated from the French. Amelie Nothomb was born in Kobe. She's a Belgian national that grew up in Japan, and her, well, most or all of her fiction is set in Japan. And this is about a woman who interns... In a Japanese corporation and things don't go well. Otherwise, the month will start. Starting tomorrow, I will be doing a three-day buddy read with Alex of Big Al Books, Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead, which I can't believe is a 2018 novel. Yes, and Joshua Whitehead is an OG Cree. I should have got Alex to teach me the pronunciation. Nihai Nihaya, Two-Spirit Indigiqueer, member of the Pegui First Nation Treaty 1. And I read the opening paragraph of this book and was a smitten kitten. I had started this buddy read before my wedding and had to be put on hold. It's now off hold, back on. The Life of E.F. Benson by Brian Masters. 
I read half of the first chapter uh, and uh, had to set it aside, but uh, I'm not a big biography reader, but I was enjoying the writing and learning more about E.F. Benson's life and his parents and whatnot. This is a buddy read with Leah from Litzy, and I met Leah and fell even more in love with her at my wedding. And so we've re we're resuming it as of today. So we'll be reading maybe a chapter a week. Oh, this one is unrealistic, but if there's space in September, Leah and I will also be buddy reading this Quebecois novel, Kamaraska, by Anne Hebert, which was a total cover by, I hauled it recently, I don't need to say any more about it, but uh, if, if Leah and I don't buddy read it in September, it'll be an October buddy read, but maybe we'll fit it in. And the only non-buddy read book that I am definitely want to start and finish in September because I've waited too long to get to the next Barbara Pym novel that I'm reading in sequence, and that is Quartet in Autumn. So I will be reading this by myself, and I can't wait to start it next week. The last one I read was a buddy read with Ange, and it's about three months ago, No Fond Return of Love. And the last few I've read, I keep thinking, is the best Barbara Pym novel I've ever read, so let's see what I think of Quartet in Autumn, which is the novel that she wrote and had published after her 17 years in the literary wilderness. And I'm so curious to see how she writes about older people, because she started her literary career with Some Tame Gazelle, which was about older, uh, I don't know, middle-aged spinsters. And she just extrapolated her imagination of how she and her sister would be in middle age and then the characters in the subsequent novels have been younger, a little bit younger, 30s, late 30s, 40s, early 40s. And this Quartet in Autumn is about, as far as I understand it, a senior, so I'm really curious to see what she does with that. Next Wednesday, I will start a buddy read with Britta Bowler of Women Talking by Miriam Taves, hot off the press. Miriam Taves is the author of one of my favorite novels out of Canada, All My Puny Sorrows, and this is her latest one, which just sounds amazing. Uh, and really stark and uh, going to be a tough read. It's based on the true story of a remote religious Mennonite colony. As you may know, Miriam Taves is an ex-Mennonite. And I can't remember where this colony was. I want to say South America. And over a hundred girls were drugged and raped repeatedly in that colony. And then when they complained about it, they weren't believed. And this is a fictional, fictionalized version of that story. Women talking. It's going to be tough. I can't wait. I love Miriam Taves. A month-long buddy read with Ange of Beyond the Pages will be this, my very first Dorothy Whipple novel, The Priory, and it's 500 and some pages. But the print for these Persephone books, it's big margins, so I don't think it'll be as, as uh, challenging a read as it uh, uh, physically appears to be like it will be. Uh, this is about, I've done a page 112 tag about this. It's about an upper, upper class living on an ancient estate and there's a stepmother and stuff, but I think I'm gonna like it. So, looking forward to that. Are you sitting down? I'm gonna try a mystery novel this month. It's a buddy read with Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. She talked me into it and I said yes, but I'm so nervous. <laughs> But this is a novel that uh, just one reader raved about recently, and it's supposed to be very literary, and it's a mystery novel for people that don't like mysteries. So that's me. It's called Brat Farrar uh, by Josephine Tay, and it's about some kind of an imposter, a family inheritance, something, something. It's supposed to be really good, and it's on script, so I'm going to try it with Mel. So somebody, Mel's going to have to hold my hand, and she's already told me she won't hate me if I bail. And in the second half of the month, I'm looking forward to a couple other buddy reads. This is with Claire of Claire Reads Books, The Bridge on the Drina by Ivo Andrik. And this is a classic from Bosnia. And it's a historical novel that opens in the late 16th century and goes up to the beginning of World War I. So what a sweep, hey? And it centers on this bridge, I guess. But I kind of invited myself to that buddy read with Claire when I heard her talk about it on a book haul or on a, t wouldn't have been a TBR because it was quite a while ago we talked about it, but 
maybe a book haul. So I'm looking forward to, I've never read a Bosnian novel, hadn't heard of this writer. I'll tell you how it goes. And the last buddy read I have planned for September <laughs> is another weekend long one, and it's a reread for me and a couple others of the, there's about five of us in the buddy read now, but it's A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr. I read it two years ago. Absolutely loved it and wrote in my Goodreads review, if I knew what was good for me, I would reread it every couple of years. So I'm going to honor that. And this is a buddy read with Wilson, Wilson Shergart, Heidi of My Reading Life, Curtis of Curtis Books and Books, and newly, I'm delighted to, that we have added to the group, Chris of Chris Bookish Cauldron. So I can't remember who's read it already and who hasn't. I'm looking forward to that. That's uh, the third weekend in September. By now you will have seen, or you should have seen, my Eric Carl Anderson 40th birthday tag video. And on there I told Eric that I was, based on his recommendation, I was going to try this novel. I don't think, based on what I've already told you I'm going to be reading in September, that I will get to it in September, but I'm going to do my damnedest to try. The Third Reel by S.J. Nudia. And yes, that is the correct pronunciation. I checked, checked, twice checked three times. S.J. Nudia, and it sounds fascinating. It's about a South African expatriate in London during the time of the terrible decade of the 80s when South Africa was on fire, and he is a film student, and he falls in love with a German guy and finds the first of three reels from some 1930s German film and ends up going to Germany to try to find the rest. And then it goes from there and it sounds, it's a chunkster, it sounds incredible. So if not September, as soon as possible thereafter, and if anybody wants to buddy read it with me. Uh, so what do you think? Do you think I have enough to read for September? <laughs> Now that I've put, put it all down in a video, I'm feeling, no, i actually not feeling overwhelmed. I do well with buddy reads. I have trouble fitting in anything that isn't a buddy read. So, uh, and what a fabulous lot of buddy reads I have coming up, hey? All right, have you read any of these books? What do you think? Give me your thoughts below, and thanks for watching.